This is The Craft. We talk a lot about low-hanging fruit and about how to find ways in order to accomplish your goals and whatever it is that you like to do within shooting the fastest and not wasting your time on things that may or may not matter. For me, my interest has been leaning more towards wind and trying to improve my wind skill ability because my fundamentals are doing pretty good. So let's take a look at what I've done here. I've listed out my load going at 2650, 2750, 2850, and 2950. What I want you to note is that although the wind holds are different, the brackets that they comprise are not all that different, which tells me that when I know the wind speed, the bracket that I need to use to cover the target is going to be a similar width regardless of that bullet speed. Now this is a lot different than I had imagined prior because what I was imagining is unknown distance, unknown wind, and shooting analog. I'd also spend time reading and seeing that people like to load their bullets smoking fast in order to cheat the wind, but it turns out that with the right speed and the right dope chart, the, the bullet speed really isn't going to be making that huge of a difference because you're still covering the target with a similar size bracket using your reticle. Which brings me to using your reticle to not only think about your wind brackets, but also your craft shooter bracket. So let's back up a sec. I talk a lot about the craft and using your ability in standing, kneeling, seated, prone to shoot a target that represents your overall group size. Now that's not your rifle's performance size, that's your overall group size. And that group size for most people is much bigger than they would expect. On average, with thousands of targets that we've analyzed, the craft shooter number is about a five. Now top performers are shooting much lower than that, around a one and a half. So let's look at a one and a half shooter. You'll notice here that Dave is shooting at a target that's six tenths wide. Six tenths wide is about his shooter number in wind at distance. In order to do that and have a high hit rate, you've got to not only know your shooter bracket, but also your wind bracket. Here Mike shooting a 4 tenth wide target, which is also about his shooter number, so his wind call has to be very, very good in order to hit that. Here he's shooting at a 3 tenths target, and now he's going back to a 4 tenths target. Now for these guys, I would argue that even though they're good shooters, they're going to miss from time to time because they're shooting at targets that are essentially the size of their shooter number. Now some of you might say, whoa, 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 whoa. My gun shoots one hole and with two miles an hour, four miles an hour, five miles an hour, we're talking about a two tenth bracket or a four tenth bracket or a five tenth bracket. But I think that that's thinking about things the wrong way and using the brackets incorrectly. So let's have a conversation about shooter bracket and wind bracket combined. And then when you go to the range and you assess your craft shooting number and potentially reflect on your craft wind number, you might be able to have more realistic expectations of your shooting ability today. Now, let's look back. We've got brackets of two tenths, five tenths, and six tenths. We got two tenths, five tenths, and six tenths. And you might have a target and say, well, that fits nicely within my target. And I would say that this is absolutely unrealistic for any shooter at a distance. And the reason being is that this implies that you're shooting one hole. For deeper conversations on this, you could read Brian Litt's book. But for today, I'm going to say that this is an unrealistic perspective. What you need to do is take those wind brackets and overlay them on the outside of your shooter number to understand what your realistic expectations are of a first round impact at a distance once you know your craft shooter number and you come up with a realistic level of wind speed calling ability. And that's a very hard thing to do. But you see here that now, instead of having a 100% hit rate, there are gonna be shots dropped. That's much more realistic than the original view. So at what point is wind gonna be more or less important? Well, that's kinda up to you. But let's take a look at a craft shooter with a two and a four with those same wind brackets drawn above and below their target. You can see here that for the shooter with a two, those wind brackets are going to be a much bigger influence 
on their hit rate than the craft shooter here with the four. Their bracket is so big that a target that's four tenths or six tenths wide, they're gonna be missing it half the time even with a perfect wind call. So adjusting those wind brackets down from four to a two really isn't gonna have an appreciable difference on their overall hit rate. And so in this instance, I would argue that the craft shooter of a four needs to start bringing that down. Now here we've got a one, two, three, four, and a five superimposed on each other, such that you can see the relative difference between those numbers in the brackets that they comprise. If we're shooting targets that are four tenths, five tenths wide, and you expect to have a high hit rate, and you've got a craft shooter number of higher than three, there's no way that you're gonna have close to 100% hit rate. Absolutely zero. Even with the best wind call, you're gonna be dropping shots. So I think that the time is better spent bringing your fundamentals down such that your fundamentals can always print within your expected target size and then start to layer in wind. Because at best, a two mile an hour wind call is gonna raise your craft shooter number by one or two points. And all of a sudden, that two is gonna go to a three and you're gonna be dropping shots again. Now there aren't many matches where the top shooters are getting 100% hit rates. In fact, a really good hit rate is probably 90%, in which case the two goes to a three, they adjust on those wing calls, and they drop maybe their first shot on most of the stages and then hit the rest of the impacts. I think time is better spent, money is better spent, standing, kneeling, seated, prone, until your hit rates are justified by a craft shooter value that's below a three, preferably in the two range under stress, after which you can layer in wind, you can layer in environmentals, and you'll start to see the results that you expect in a realistic way. Now this probably hurts feelings, it hurts my feelings, but I think it's much more realistic and it helps frame a path from where we are to where we wanna be that's tangible, it's more or less linear, and it simply involves being self-reflective, using a variety of shooting positions, repeating it to develop proper fundamentals, seeking help where we need it, so that when we're asked to shoot from positions that we didn't predetermine, we can maintain those hit rates and performance rates and do well at the thing that we wanted to do to begin with. Maybe that's hunting, maybe that's competing, maybe that's just shooting a milk jug at a mile. I think your best bet is to learn your brackets and whittle down that shooter number first. If you agree, like, subscribe, share. If you don't, comment below. We'll see you at the range. I think you will.